Well, it's not Grant and Alexander of the player's aid. It's Goober, the traveling bear. And Goober and I are going to do a review of the Historical Game Company. And they're printed by Blue Panther Printing. And we have the French Indian War, 55 Days at P. King. Oh, Struggle for New France is one of my games. Sorry about that. We have the Siege of Khartoum and the Battle of Yorktown. And what we're going to talk about is we're going to take one of those games and see how we can actually use it for miniature war gaming. That's right. We're going to take one of these simple board war games that I think are quite well made and we're going to go through it and see how you at home could use whatever scale figures you have and use it as a guide for miniature wargaming. And I hope you enjoy this video and we'll see what we are going to do. I think we're going to pick Yorktown. And then if this video does well and everyone likes it, we'll look at the Siege of Khartoum or maybe 55 Days at Peking. All right, let's uh, get set up for our review. All right, well, let's start off with the Battle of Yorktown game. It's made by the Historical Game Company, and that's the box cover. We'll flip it over, and the Battle of Yorktown, and we have 48 die-cut counters, a rule book, some game cards, the game map, six-sided dice. Um, and I got to say, all the games uh, by this gentleman um, uh, are just really, really nice. I, I can't say enough of how good his games are. Um, they come, they're, the quality, the printing that is done uh, by Blue Panther is top-notch. But what we're going to talk about is not so much the board game aspect, but what can be done for a miniature war game. Now, I picked Yorktown. And so we have the map out here. And I will say this map is made of a canvas type material. It's not paper. It's not cardboard. It's quite unique in the board war game world. So, right off the bat, you'll see that we have our entrenchments. For those of you that uh, know a lot about the uh, Battle of Yorktown, we have Redoubt 10 and 9 here. Of course, uh, the water has taken over a lot of this area. So, I'm going to say, let's say I was going to use this for a 15, 20 millimeter uh, you could go each one of these hexes being uh, six inches, so you'd have one, two, three, four, five, six. You would need a, a, a roughly an oh an eight by six table or ten by six to encompass this whole area. So right off the bat, you have a map now. What I would do with my 54 millimeter figures, I would probably do this section here and do the attack on Redoubt 8s and 9 in 54 and make these roughly a little bit bigger than a 12 inch, 18 inch section. So we've talked about the map. Um, and of course you'd make a little village through here. Cornwallis's cave would be interesting. So you, right now, this is the Allied siege line. Uh, you have the other siege line here. And out here are the American forces and then our French forces in white, which you may not be able to see too well. So they advance, the British fall back, and um, I, Steve did a really nice job on this map and you have all the setups. All right, so order of battle would be next. We have an idea of a map. You would convert it to six millimeter, 20 millimeter, 
15 or 28 you may be able to do the whole game or you could just do a section on um, the attacks over here the new visitor center is basically right here by the way and I do have some videos of Gloucester Point across the the river. So as far as our units, I'm going to pause this. Welcome back. So what I've done is I quickly threw down the figure the figures, excuse me, the uh, the counters. And we'll get a little closer. Now we have an order of battle of uh, Let's start off with the Black Hessians here. We need a one artillery piece with a gun crew. So let's say we're using my 54 millimeter figures and I do this off as a six inch, each hex is six inches. I could probably pull this off. So this would be a gun battery, one gun. Uh, each one of these units I could say is a 10 man unit. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. I would need 50 Hessians roughly. Okay, and then our British, we have uh, Highlanders over here, and so we have one little group of mounted um, cavalry there, and a couple, we need a carriage, two naval guns, and a regular artillery piece, so that's easy to reproduce, and then regular infantry, you know, here's a light infantry, or grenadier, I guess that is, um, so you need about, I don't know, around 100 figures for the British. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 110. If you were just to do it in that system. So, and then you could always cut it down or bring it up. Someone may have a huge Rev War army um, with a lot of 15 millimeters figures. And this would be easily uh, uh, ordered of battle. But... Uh, this game is really good as a board game, but it also can be used for miniatures. So now we have the French army. I'm going to pause this. All right, welcome back. So we have the French army. Um, by the way, I, I didn't really tell Mr. Steve, I think his last name is Kling. If I mis mispronounce that, please uh, forgive me. But I, I didn't tell him I was actually doing this uh, video. Uh, but anyhow, we have our French troops here, and you could do the same thing, uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 French soldiers, and I have that plus a lot more in 54 millimeter. So I can actually do the French army. Uh, we need a siege mortar and an artillery piece. So that would be this. So we have our French army, and of course, once these... Uh, these will actually fall back to the next trench line during the game. Uh, but we have George Washington and his men. So uh, let me uh, pause the camera and we'll set them up next. Welcome back. All right, so we have our American forces. Um, we'll knock off the artillery. We need two carriage, two regular field guns and a siege gun. And then uh, two dragoons, two cavalry units. And then some light infantry and regular infantry. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, about 100. So um, I easily can do this entire order of battle in 54 millimeter with 10 man units um, using like brother against brother or um, one of the Osprey books even. So that's how you can actually make this game and the, I'm going to move the camera angle a bit. All right, change the camera angle. Our hexagons are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So roughly 10. Um, so you could actually go with 6 inches. You could easily make this a 10 by 8 table, 10 by 6. Um, I could probably squeeze it into the 8x5, but it would be very tight. I probably would need the 10x6 size table. All right, we have one more thing to cover on this um, idea. And if, uh, please subscribe, by the way, to my channel. Um, 
This is a pure wargaming channel now. There's no history sites. I moved that to Bill's History World. But we have one other thing that's included in this game set, and that is the playing cards. So I'm wondering if you could use the playing cards. Um, so I'm going to use one card here as an example. Um, it says naval artillery, move six British units, and attack with five British units. And then special, all naval artillery units add a plus one to attacks during combat this turn. So here's a naval gun and there's a naval gun. And then for the um, French American, Franco American side, the allied cards, there's several of those. Um, move six allied units and attack. And um, this is Knox artillery, all American artillery units. Conduct attacks before movement, fire twice, and add a plus one. Um, so, uh, actually using these cards in a miniature version would give you some command and control options. And I really think um, after I get done with Historicon and building my 54 millimeter uh, Fort William Henry, um, I would try using these cards. Here we have light infantry, the Jaegers. Um, move British units, uh, attack with four, all British light and Hessian Jaeger units may move an extra hex. So the whole idea behind this video is to merge a board war game with miniatures. Now I have my French Indian War uh, games, volumes one and two, which used to be um, you know, Bloody Mohawk and Savage Wilderness. And they convert very nicely to miniatures also. However, I just have the French Indian War games. And then, of course, the new Brandywine. But this, uh, this whole game set of the Yorktown game is really nicely done. And I know Grant and Alexander have been doing the uh, videos of the Historical Game Company by Blue Panther. And I have... Um, just about all of all of his games so I'm going to do this game in 54 millimeter um, later on this next month and then if I get some good video reviews we will see about doing either Khartoum or 55 days at Peking and I've done both of those games of course in 54 but I've never used the board game as uh, an player's aid. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, of course, you can purchase this through Blue Panther if you're uh, and the historical game company. And I can't say more about it than it plays fast. It sets up fast. And um, I like these games so much that, uh, you know, the counters are really nice. Um, it is fully goober approved and I hope some of you out there have a sense of humor about me adding goober the traveling bear thank you everyone stay safe be kind be courteous and thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe